In this video, I'll be covering how to limit user permissions to only specific subfolders within a shared folder on a Synology NAS. We'll set things up to the point that users only see their own specific files and folders, even if other files and folders exist. The idea of limiting permissions makes me think of our cats, and I'll use them as the subjects in the example scenario I'll be working with in this video. I'll start out with a shared folder and name it our cats, then create three subfolders, one for each of them, and name the folders Nisha, Oreo, and Docker. Within each subfolder, I'll create additional subfolders for Nisha, but for Oreo and Docker, I'll create a subfolder only within their specific parent folder. For permissions, I'll set up Nisha with access to all files and folders. Like in the real world, we let Nisha generally go where she wants because she doesn't tend to jump on things or eat things that she shouldn't. For Oreo and Docker, they can get themselves into some trouble, so we limit their access a little. In the shared folder and subfolder example, I'll set them up with limited access to specific folders they need to get to their own individual folder, which they'll have full access to. Because this video is mainly about setting permissions to limit user access, rather than creating shared folders and subfolders, I've already created the structure I mentioned in the previous section, and here is where we are so far. From the shared folder control panel, I've created the rcats shared folder, leaving all the options set to default. I've also added user accounts for Nisha, Oreo, and Docker from the user and group control panel again taking all the default options when creating their accounts. Using FileStation, I've added the subfolder structure along with adding some files into each of the folders. And finally, I've enabled the RCATS shared folder as a team folder from the Synology Drive admin console. Now we're ready to set user permissions. First, I'll head back into Control Panel and shared folder and edit the settings for the RCAT shared folder. Here, the only thing that needs to be changed is enabling the hide subfolders and files from users without permissions, which affects SMB, AFP, and FileStation, which this information pop-up details. I've also found that this setting hides subfolders and files from users without permissions in Synology Drive as well. I'll click Save to implement the change and close the control panel. Next, I'll bring up FileStation, right-click on Our Cats, select Properties, and bring up Permissions to start working on the user permissions. I'll first work on Nisha's account by clicking Create to bring up the permission editor. I'll select Nisha from the user or group pull-down menu, and because her permissions will be the same throughout the shared folder infrastructure, I'll leave the Apply To option set to All. Under Permission, I'll enable both Read and Write, then click Done and Save from the Edit Shared Folder window. For Oreo and Docker, their permissions are a little more complicated to set up because of the restrictions I'd like to implement for each of them. I'll start with Oreo by right-clicking on the RCAT Shared Folder once again, then select Properties, Permissions, then click Create. I'll select Oreo from the user or group pull-down menu, then for apply to, I'll uncheck everything except for this folder to limit permissions specifically to the RCAT shared folder. Finally, under permissions, I'll select read, then click done, then save to finalize the permission changes. Next, I'll repeat the same steps to the Oreo folder, bringing up properties, then permissions, and create the same set of permissions for Oreo here. This again limits his access to read-only for this specific folder. Finally, within the Oreo folder, I'll right-click on the Oreo stuff folder, bring up properties, and again create additional permissions for Oreo here. This time I'll leave all selected for the Apply to pull-down menu and select both read and write under permission. This allows Oreo full access to all files and folders within this folder. Then I'll finish up by clicking Done, then Save once again. For Docker, I'll speed up the video, but essentially I'll do the same thing I did for Oreo. 
I'll give him read access to the RCAT shared folder and Docker subfolder, limiting permissions just to those specific folders, then give him read and write permissions to his own Docker stuff folder and everything within it. Now let's have a look at what those settings do by mounting an SMB share on my MacBook. I first mounted the RCAT shared folder as Nisha, and as you can see, she sees everything and is able to delete files, upload files, and change files throughout the shared folder and subfolders. Next, I'll remount the same RCAT subfolder as Docker, and we can see his restrictions. Docker doesn't see any files or folders other than his own, but has full access here to delete files, upload files, and change files. This also applies to DSM and FileStation. Logging in as Nisha, she sees everything again. Then logging out and logging back in as Oreo, we see his restrictions in place. Synology Drive also displays the same results. I'll use the Synology Drive web interface in this example, and again, Nisha has access to everything. Whereas logging in as Docker, we see his restrictions once again in effect. Hopefully this video helped you in setting up user permissions in your environment and make sure to like this video if it did. Also, if you found this content helpful, make sure to subscribe and consider supporting my work by checking out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.